In this video, I go over how to install Manjaro Architect Edition. But before we jump into the actual installation, I don't go over installing the ISO onto a USB drive. So if you can, I would recommend using the search bar up top and discover how to do that. However, I do start out at the actual first screen you'd see once you insert your installation media. Also, during the partitioning phase, I only do MBR and Legacy Boot in this video as it's geared towards beginners and that is the easiest concepts to actually absorb and use. So if you are looking for like a UEFI or a GPT partition table and molding that into an actual installation guide, this won't be much use to you as I do use CF Disk, which again uses MBR and Legacy Boot. And I also have made a published Amazon guide. So check the link down below and it'll actually show you uh, the actual guide that you can download onto your Kindle. Or if you have any other e-reader, it would easily download into it. And that way, when you're offline doing this installation, you're not sitting there on your phone having to go through and try and check to see what's going on. You can just take this guide and do it, or you can actually just print the guide out as well so you have that physical copy. I highly recommend it. It's 99 cents on Amazon. I tried to price it as low as I could just to have uh, accessibility for so everyone could actually reference it why they do this installation. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna go into right into the boot screen once you've inserted your USB installation media. Okay, after we've inserted our boot media of Manjaro Architect Edition, we get to this screen. Now you can change the key maps or time zone if you need to. I leave everything the same and just defaulted to free. Um, one thing to mention is if you are on an NVIDIA, you might change uh, the driver equals free to maybe proprietary or non-free. But for this video, I'm using an AMD card, so I don't need to do that, and I'm just gonna boot right into the setup installer. Okay, from this is screen, all you do is just as it says on the screen, Manjaro and Manjaro, and then just setup. And this launches directly into the setup installer so we can easily go ahead and start configuring and setting up our Manjaro instance. From here, select your language. Okay, and this is the default screen. We're not gonna touch on options three, four, or five in this video just because uh, I'm not installing a server system. A custom system is basically an unconfigured desktop environment that you have to configure yourself. And then system re rescue you use in case your system didn't boot, you could put this installer back in and boot to terminal or uh, you know go ahead and install other drivers that may be needed to get your computer working. So those three options are what they do. But with that said, let's go ahead and prepare our install and then we will install the full desktop operating system. So set virtual console, I leave this alone. Uh, it's pretty much set to US already. Uh, list devices, always smart. This kind of shows you what devices are on your system. Right now I have one hard disk that has no partitions and it's labeled as the name SDA. So just know SDA is my primary drive. And then we partition the disk. Now we'll select the SDA from the prior screen. And then from here, I don't like to use automatic partitions because it actually creates two partitions. One's a boot partition and one is just the other one. And it kind of makes mounting a pain. So I like to use CF disk for BIOS legacy boot. So doing this, I like to do DOS and new partition size. And I'm just gonna make one partition for this video. And we wanna make it bootable. And then we just simply write these changes, spell out the word yes enter and then we quit so that is done we partitioned our disk that simple we're not going to do encryption or lvm on this install and now we just need to mount that root partition so we'll go ahead and click that we select our file system that we want to format that as i recommend ext4 and we will mount that from here i like to leave all these options defaulted so only no a time selected and we will mount 
From here, I don't like to use the swap partition, and we are ready to configure the mirror list. Uh, I don't like to edit the default Pac-Man config, however, we do need to edit Pac-Man mirror config. There's a couple things I do like to do with this. One, I like to do method rank, and then for protocols, I like to also just enable HTTPS and HTTP. I like to give priority to the secure channel. So I like to put HTTPS before HTTP, and we'll go ahead and write this out. Uh, the reason why we do this is FTP is very slow, and a lot of times I've seen it fail on doing this type of installation. So from here, we're ready to rank those mirrors. So we'll go ahead and rank for stable. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up. The ranking usually takes uh, about a couple minutes to go ahead and run through, but, but by doing the HTTPS and the HTTP, we cut down on it by a considerable margin. So this should take, you know, probably about two to three minutes to go ahead and rank all these servers. Now from this screen, all we want to do is select the top three. I, I typically like to do this just to have a good variety. So uh, let's go ahead and select our top three servers. Uh, you can select more than that if you like, but I don't particularly uh, like to. So from there, we just tab over to OK and we are ready. So our mirrors are set up. We don't need to refresh the keys or the cache. So we just go ahead and go back and we are ready to install the actual desktop system. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and click install and it will go ahead and select in. in so from here, we'd select the base and then I like to select at least two kernels just because uh, you have a fallback if one kernel doesn't work. So uh, most people would do like a 4.14 for the LTS and then like the latest, which is 4.20. 4 so let's go ahead and select those. And then from here, you can kind of go, hey, what do I want to do for this? So I want the headers uh, just for building things on this VM. And this is actually a guest VM, so I will be using the guest modules. We want to select what uh, desktop environment we're using on this one. So for this one, I'm gonna do XFCE, or actually, you know what, I'm gonna do I3. And from here, we'll go ahead and say no to this. I like to do most of the packages actually once I've done the actual install. From this screen, just go ahead and select full and go ahead and let it run and do the installation. Okay, from this screen, you have the choice between free and proprietary drivers. The other two I would just stay away from. Um, if you're using an NVIDIA card, select proprietary. Otherwise, it's best to stay with the free drivers. So that's what I'll do here and select free drivers. And that's it. So the actual desktop is now installed. Now we need to install the bootloader on our main drive. So since we only have one drive, there's no point in doing an OS prober. But if you had a dual boot situation where you're running this with Windows 10 or, or Windows 7, uh, you'd want to put OS prober on there too. Or if you had multiple Linux installs as well, uh, it'd be good. But since we only have one, we're going to just do grub and go ahead and just select the drive we want. Please note that when it says this may fail on some machines, sometimes the actual configuration can take several minutes to even, I've seen it go as long as 10 minutes on this part. So just be very patient during this section and then also when we go to rebuild it as well. Okay, with that, we'll select our main drive here. After selecting your main drive, you may notice that it does take a little bit to get going again. It does seem like the delay is about the same as the first time around. So just, you know, if it took you five minutes to get to this part, it'll probably take you another five minutes to finish installing Grub. And now our bootloader has finished installing. So with that bootloader installed, let's go ahead and configure our base installation now. Um, we need to generate the F stab. This tells basically connects all the drives we've connected. Um, we only have one connected from the root, but if you had, let's say the root, a separate home partition, a boot partition, and then anything else that you've already mounted, when you generate this F stab, it will auto connect those drives when you start up your Manjaro. So we'll go ahead and do this. 
always do device UUID unless you're doing a UEFI installation in which you'd want to select the bottom option there. With that done, it is set. Now we set our host name, which I usually just leave as the default Manjaro, but you can change this to anything you like. From there, we go and set our locale, which I'm in the US, so I need to do EN US, so English US. So we'll just tab down or page down into that. Okay, and then set keyboard output. We always just set this to US. All right, and then time zone, we were, I'm in America, so America, and then Chicago is usually my time zone. So there we go. Um, I always do UTC here. This says even if you're dual booting, but just always do UTC. It's much easier that way. I prefer to do this method and then doing like a registry thing on my Windows install if I have time zone issues, but I've just always had a huge headache with local time. so. I always leave it on UTC no matter the situation. And then we set our root password. We add our user, make sure it's all lowercase. And then we select what shell we want. I recommend just doing bash because that's what most distributions use and I'm more familiar with it. So you can do that. ZSH is a big uh, kind of up and coming. Uh, shell as far as I'm concerned a lot of people do enjoy it but like I said I'm more familiar with bash so that's why I choose that and then set the password for this user this can be the same as the root password just know that's not quite secure and then let's go ahead and do our system tweaks uh, I like to enable automatic login because, hey, this is in my house. No one else is going to do it. I don't enable hibernation as I don't really like it. And we don't have a swap file. Now, I will say, let's say you do enable hibernation. Just note, it will create a new partition and take away from your drive space and use the same amount of space is equivalent to your memory. So if you have eight gigs of memory, it's going to partition away eight gigs of hard disk space. So just know that performance wise, I always leave IO schedules alone for swap configuration. If you want to, you can uncomment this dirty ratio and pick up just a little bit of a performance boost if you like. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then preload. If you have a lot of memory over eight gigs, I would highly recommend preloading as this does increase the launch times of your normal apps that you'd launch. So with that done, let's go ahead and go back and see any security and system D tweaks. We already did performance. We've already done the auto login. Um, I always change the journal D logging to 50 megs. This can get really bloated really quick. So that's why I always recommend coming in here and changing this to 50 megs. And disabling core dumps, I don't particularly like core dumps or use them so I usually just come in and disable those as well and restricting access to kernel logs that is actually the core dump since we've disabled core dumps we don't even need to touch number three and with that we have pretty much configured and tweaked them you can review your configuration files or if you have anything else you want to directly get in and change you can ch root into your installation and get from the actual shell however we've already configured everything from the menus so we don't need to do either one of those and we'll go back from here we can click done and close the installer and then write the log of all the things we've done and then we just sudo reboot and remove the installation media. So that was the full installation of Manjaro Architect Edition. Uh, from here you could easily get onto your desktop. I'm not going to go ahead and show that just because depending on what you are using as far as KDE or XFCE or i3 in this install, it doesn't really matter. It's going to show a different desktop, uh, but it does work. It's very simple to do if you follow this guide. If you do have any questions, please let me know on the Chris Titus Tech subreddit. Uh, I will personally help you out or a community member will help you as well. Uh, but with that said, that was installing Manjaro and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.